Today we're talking about something a little bit different. Farts. That's right. You've probably all heard of Stephanie Mato. She is the woman who has sold her farts in jars on the internet and made headlines, I think internationally, all about her jars of farts. <laughs> so she made a video all about how she makes her farts in jars and uh, I'm gonna watch it. We're gonna talk about farts, but we're also gonna talk about the kind of gray area where selling things like farts on the internet falls into from a legal perspective, all right? And listen, I'm gonna preface this whole video by saying we are not here to kink shame. We are not here to yuck anyone's yum. We are not here to slut shame. We love sluts, we love bimbos, we love hoes, we love sex workers, we love everyone under the sun who does whatever they want with their body as long as they're adults and it's consensual, okay? That's not what we're here for. We're just here to have a good time and talk about fart law, okay? Okay, speaking of letting your true colors show, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, Casetify. Casetify is a tech company that specializes in phone accessories, especially phone cases. I just got this from them and I am obsessed. Mentally sick, but physically thick. Are you kidding? That's hilarious. I had the hardest time picking out what cases I wanted from Casetify. They have so many amazing designs from so many great artists and you can design some for yourself. In addition to my mentally sick, but physically thick one, I also got this beautiful tortoise shell. And then I also got two really sassy ones. I like to to be able to speak without having to say a word. You know what I mean? And what's fun about these cases is they have this coating on them called Defensify, which is an antimicrobial coating that kills 99% of bacteria. And they're non-toxic and non-hazardous. This is their impact case, and they also have a new ultra impact case. You can see that the corners on this ultra impact case reinforced and they protect your phone at drops up to 9.8 feet. And these cases are made up of 65% plant-based and recycled materials. So thank you so much to Casetify for sponsoring today's video. And as a special gift to my followers, you can get 15% off your order if you go to casetify.com slash Miller. Link is in the description down below. That's 15% off your order at casetify.com slash Miller. Enjoy. All right, now on to some farts. New business venture, which has just been exploding. It's all over the internet, which is pretty crazy. I never ever expected this. Honestly, I started selling farts about three weeks ago and I made a TikTok that went really, really viral. Hey guys, today I'm gonna be showing you a day in the life of a girl who sells her farts in a jar. While I wait for those farts to develop, I like to read. I'm very smart, love to read. And then after I'm ready to go, I go ahead and, you know, do my work, do my job. I don't need to show you that, guys. Honestly, I think it's brilliant marketing how kind of tongue in cheek her TikTok was like it seems like satire until the end when she's like I'm charging a thousand dollars you can go to my website and then you're like oh she's for real and it makes you want to find out more because it's so wild I think it's brilliant marketing so when you really total up everything all of the effort and the natural resources that go into creating this once in a lifetime product then it really is a good deal when you think about it <laughs> The people that are coming at me saying, oh, who the hell would pay $1,000 or $500 for a fart? That's way too much money. What I have to say to those people is like, walk a mile in my shoes. You try to make farts every single day, multiple times a day. It's not easy. <laughs> Who's gonna tell her that we're all doing farts all day long? Again, I'm not yucking anyone's yum. It's just so wild to me the way that she is selling this as though this is like a high value product and not just her putting a fart in a jar. <laughs> I feel like the easier explanation for her would have just been to say basic economic supply and demand. There were people willing to pay me $500 for my farts, so I fulfilled that need. <laughs> That's legit. And I think a lot of people are like, wow, she's so interesting that um, I wonder what her farts smell like. So I think that's kind of like the brain process there. And then, I mean, I can't really, I can't really think of any other reason why. Okay, it's stuff like that where I feel like she's in on the joke. Like she looks down at her boobs and is like, I don't know why anyone would buy any fart jars for any reason other than that I seem like an interesting person. Is this all satire? Is this a joke that none of us are in on? Listen, good for her. So this video was made back in December, 2021. Since that video, she made $200,000 on fart jars, but then she was hospitalized because of all of the fiber she was eating. Yikes. Okay, but then, and because she couldn't make as many fart jars anymore due to health limitations, she actually ended up 
pairing up with an artist and having them draw fart jars and then selling those fart jars as NFTs. But we can cannot make this shit up. We're in like the crumbling end of late stage capitalism. <laughs> Okay, but is it legal to sell your farts in jars? First, some fun fart facts. Allegedly, there is a law in Florida that says that you cannot fart after 6 p.m. in public on Thursdays. Now, I did a little digging around in the Florida statutes and I did not find any actual proof that this law is still on the books, but it's all over the internet. Why do I know this? Because yes, I was Googling fart laws last night. This is my real job. <laughs> So I'm not sure that that's an actual law, but it's a fun fact nonetheless. And if it is still on the books, there's no way that cops in Florida are wandering around in public after 6 p.m. on Thursday nights trying to arrest people for farting, you know what I mean? Pretty sure they have better things to do. It's Florida after all. All right, and then in the country of Malawi, there was a law that said, and I quote, any person who vitiates the atmosphere in any place so as to make it noxious to the public, to the health of persons in general, dwelling or carrying on business in the neighborhood or passing along a public way, shall be guilty of a misdemeanor, which some people in the press in Malawi said could be interpreted to mean that even something like flatulence is illegal. Now, of course, this law was written really to help promote air quality and to punish polluters, but for some reason, the media really latched onto this idea that it could technically be interpreted to outlaw farting, and this became like a worldwide news story that Malawi had outlawed farting. It has since been clarified that the law does not actually outlaw farting. But that's a fun fart fact. Okay, so is selling your fart in a jar illegal? Probably not. However, I think it's worth bringing up the idea of an obscenity law here. I looked up the obscenity laws in Connecticut because that's where Stephanie lives and the Connecticut obscenity law says this. Under Connecticut law, it is a class B misdemeanor to knowingly sell, distribute, exhibit, or advertise obscene materials. A person is guilty of obscenity when, knowing its content and character, he promotes or possesses with intent to promote any obscene material or performance. Material being anything tangible which is capable of being used or adapted to arouse prurient, shameful, or morbid interest, whether through the medium of reading, observation, sound, or in any other manner. I'd say a fart in a jar could probably fall under the idea of a material in this statute. However, is it obscene? We've talked about obscenity before, most recently in my last reaction to uh with Trixie and Katya, I'll link it up here. As a refresher, our definition of obscenity comes from Miller v. California. In that case, the Supreme Court said that material is obscene if taken as a whole, it predominantly appeals to the prurient interest, meaning sex, basically. It depicts or describes in a patently offensive way a prohibited sexual act, and taken as a whole, it lacks serious literary, artistic, educational, political, or scientific scientific value. And this obscenity standard is judged by ordinary adults applying contemporary community standards. All right, so the fart itself, probably not going to be obscene. However, you could argue that it does appeal to the prurient interest because it is in some way sexual in nature. I don't really know why you would buy a fart in a jar if there wasn't some sort of kink or other sexual interest in the person whose fart you're buying. Maybe I'm wrong, comment below. <laughs> and I don't know that you could say that the fart in the jar has much literary, artistic, educational, political, or scientific value. Though maybe it could be considered an art piece. Maybe there's some sort of statement being made by selling farts in jars. It seems more like just a commercial enterprise, so probably doesn't have any of those values. However, I think your average adult applying general community standards wouldn't think that a fart rises to the level of obscenity. Another thing that I was thinking about is what if you were selling something like a fart in a jar to a minor? Our idea of what counts as obscene when put into that context feels like it changes a little bit. I still don't think a fart in a jar would be considered obscene in that situation, but I, generally speaking, and this is not legal advice, would avoid selling things like that to minors, just as a general rule. Just don't even go down that road. But listen, that wasn't legal advice. All right, and then another law I would highlight in connection with the sale of farts in jars would be something like the Federal Trade Commission's truth and advertising requirements, which state that you cannot make false claims about the things that you're selling, especially if you're claiming that they have any sort of health or medicinal benefits. But just generally speaking, it's technically considered fraud if you advertise something that is not true about whatever product it is that you're selling. So in this case, you would wanna make sure that if you're marketing farts in jars that you're actually selling 
farts in jars. That's not to say Stephanie was not legitimately putting her fart in a jar and selling it. I'm just saying, if you were to go ahead and start selling farts in jars, you wouldn't want to do so and then not actually ever put the fart in the jar or put some other scent in the jar and sell it. Like that would, I think, probably technically be considered fraud. All right, but there are a few other items you could sell on the internet that I feel like fall into this kind of sex worky gray area, all right? And I'm thinking specifically of selling your panties online and selling feet pics. So starting with selling panties, I feel like that would be really similar when it comes to the law as selling your farts in a jar. It's a physical item. It does appeal to a prurient interest, I think, but I think that a used panty is not necessarily obscene under general community standards. However, again, if you consider it in the context of selling it to minors, could cross the line into obscenity. So obscenity laws could come into play in situations like this. Are prosecutors sitting around trying to find people who are selling their underpants online? Probably not. I think they have more things to worry about. But it is a law that could come into play when thinking about selling your underpants on the internet. Of course, things like selling farts in jars or selling underpants on the internet, there are no actual laws written about those specific items. The thing about the internet is that it advances at a speed that legislators just can't keep up with because the law is notoriously slow, even by general standards, not to mention since the advent of the internet. So it's not technically illegal, but perhaps a stickler of a prosecutor in a more conservative community may pull out an obscenity lawsuit in order to curb the sale of farts in jars or use panties. Finally, the selling of feet pics I think is more clearly not obscene material. Like a picture of a foot doesn't necessarily always appeal to the prurient interest. So I would say that a foot pic is going to probably less readily fall under the category of obscene and could maybe more easily fall into the category of artistic because it's a photo. Who knows? However, the fact that it's a photo does open up issues of copyright law. Now, if you take the picture, then you have copyrights in those photos. The second you take the picture, you own the copyright. However, once you post it on the internet, it's out there for people to access. And even though you have copyrights in it, that doesn't necessarily mean someone isn't going to be able to copy and paste it into a public forum. So you post a picture on OnlyFans that is hidden behind a paywall. Someone could take that picture and post it publicly. It's just something to consider when you are thinking about posting photos of yourself on the internet, be it of your feet or otherwise. Now there are things that you can do in the case of your photos being leaked on the internet. You can do what's called a DMCA takedown request. That's the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which basically handles copyrights in the age of the internet. And it gives you the right to enforce your copyrights to websites who have your content posted without your permission. Most websites have DMCA takedown request forms. So if you find a photo of yours that has been leaked onto some site, you could just Google the name of the site plus DMCA takedown request. So like Facebook DMCA takedown request, and it's going to pull up the DMCA takedown request page for that site. And then you fill out your information, the URL where the infringing photo can be found and a little explanation that you own the copyright to it and that it needs to be taken down. Websites tend to take those takedown requests really seriously. So if you do that, a lot of times it's going to just take down your photo and that's the end of it. However, it is up to you to be policing it. So just because you own the copyrights in a photo, when you post it on the internet, people can still take it and post it elsewhere. And then it's up to you to kind of put out the fires as that happens. That is not to scare you away from doing whatever the hell you want with your body. That is just something that you have to keep in the back of your mind when you are considering putting photos of yourself on the internet, such as feet pics. So is selling feet pics illegal? Absolutely not. But those are some things to think about. And that, my friends, is a quick and comprehensive discussion of selling farts in jars and other sex work-ish things that you can do on the internet. Do you have other questions related to this topic? Comment them down below. Thanks once again to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Check them out in the link in the description down below. Go to casetify.com slash Miller for 15% off your order. Thanks, Casetify. Reminder to check out my brand new YouTube channel, Quit Your Job with Legia Miller, where we talk about content creation, side hustles, and financial freedom. Because whether you want to quit your job or not, you still deserve to have options. I also am offering one-on-one -on -one content creator sessions. If you want to become a content creator, you can meet with me directly. Link in the description down below to my website to schedule a session with me today. Also, I have a Patreon if you'd like to join the community over there for some more behind the scenes stuff and one-on-one -on -one conversations with me. Link is in the description down below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.